Okay, so now we have this all set up. Our arc is ready to go. Our arch. I <laughs> still haven't figured it out. Let's go ahead and hide our reference picture right now because we're basically done with what we needed it for. And we actually want to go ahead and duplicate this object multiple times so that we can create our uh, leaning tower. So we're going to duplicate, I mean, there's, you can always duplicate it, control D, and do it the really horrible way, which is to duplicate it, rotate it, oh my gosh, duplicate it some more, control D, move it, and as you can see, this is going to be extremely painful to try to, yeah, it looks like a disaster. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is select our arc and go to modify center the pivot. So modify center pivot, which basically centers our pivot. Then we're going to grab the manipulator and move it backwards. To do so, we're going to hold down the letter D on your keyboard and then push it back. With that, we can actually duplicate this and then rotate it. And you can see that this is actually a much better way of actually getting our tower to, or our arches to be duplicated. But it's still going to require a lot of um, duplicating and, and manual labor. So instead, we're going to use the fancy tool called Duplicate Special. So let's say, for example, we need to know how we want to rotate this, how much. So we're going to duplicate it, and I'm going to see the value, and the value is going to be about 27.15. OK, delete that. We're going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special. And we have a couple of options here. I highly recommend that you go to edit, reset settings, so that it, everything goes back to default. So now everything's zeros and ones, and, a def and then we can kind of play with it. We want to rotate. We're going to leave copy and parent. We don't want to translate it, but we do want to rotate it. And the question is, which one do we want to rotate it to? So let's say, for example, that I wanted to rotate it in Y. So let's do uh, 27.15, and I'm going to make a couple of copies. Number of copies, 10, apply. And you can see that right away I can get exactly the, uh, the effect that I want. But I wanted to show you also what you can do with this. Uh, let's go ahead and change, I just undid, change this to zero. I'm going to paste this and then apply. And you can see that I can quickly create some really fun abstract slash looking flowers or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a very powerful tool and I definitely recommend for you to try it out. So let's try rotate uh, Y for fun. Let's apply. And you can see that I'm getting like this staircase to somewhere. Um, almost like a, I'm not sure what it is, but it's fun. Um, watch this. If I change this to 2.3, let's do that and then apply. I can get all sorts of interesting looks. How about this? Bloop. There we go. It goes up and up and up. A little stairway to heaven. If you're interested in re uh, creating that. <laughs> it's just anyway, Duplicate Special is very, very powerful. So let me go ahead and zero everything out. I want to go ahead and keep it at on the rotate Y. And I can click apply again and you can see that it almost goes all the way but I still need a couple more copies so I'm going to undo and maybe give myself 12. I'm going to apply again and that's pretty close. If I want it to be a little bit closer I can still mess around with the numbers maybe 28 degrees might be a better option. Go ahead and apply and I think that looks pretty good. Now just an FYI, I'm not going to spend a lot of time working on the on creating the beautiful details of uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's, uh, it's very complex and it would take a long time. This is just an introduction. So we're going to keep it like this and then I'm going to keep showing you some of the fun things that we can do with um, uh, Maya. Alright, we're going to need some sort of solid base. So go ahead and create a cylinder. I'm going to duplicate this. Go to the top view and just kind of place it here so it has somewhere to stand. You might want to go to the side, the front view, and you can place it on there. Select some edges. 
I am a big fan of beveled edges. Um, I like the way beveled edges look like, when, especially when we're displaying a model. So I think it's really important that you do the same. Um, we're going to go to edit, uh, edit Mesh and we're going to go to Bevel. Over here on the right in the inputs we can use Bevel. Um, I'm going to increase my segments so that it's nice and smooth and maybe my offset can be a little bit smaller so it's a little bit more... Um, so now the edge actually looks nicer. Oops. I'm going to press 3 and you can see that when you press 3 it looks really nice. Let's go ahead and create something on the inside here. Again, I'm going to go to my top view. I'm going to scale it. Kind of fit it into this uh, object here. And let's go to the side view. Scale it so that's actually inside the space. And maybe just a wee bit higher. Alright, so this should give us an idea. Maybe make this a tiny little bit smaller. Okay. So basically, we now have a lot of arches, a space, a base, and also the inside. So again, this is going to be pretty rough, but I just wanted to get you guys the idea of what it looks like, how to quickly use uh, Duplicate Special, and how to get this to look a little bit more uh, completed. Alright, so now we're going to actually group this. So we're going to select all of the geometry, and we're going to do a Control G. Again, you can go to Edit, Group, all the way down here. But again, you need to use shortcuts. It's the best way to do it. Control G. And you may be wondering, what in the world did that just do? Well, let's go to the Windows Outliner and I can tell you what happened. As you can see, we have a now we have a group uh, called Group 1 and there's a little plus sign. Open up the plus sign and you're going to see that we have a bunch of arcs and every time we duplicate it, notice that it created 12 of them. And then we have these two cylinders that we haven't actually labeled yet. So I'm going to call this Base and I'm going to call this Interior. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this curve. We don't need it. And let's call group one. I'm going to call this um, level one. Okay. So what's nice about groups is that it all the pieces of geometry, instead of actually trying to select every single one of them, you now actually can just select level one or all, or the group. And that's really helpful, especially with what we're going to do next, which is actually duplicate this. So I'm going to go to my side view. And I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my front view. And my manipulator, I want it to be right at the bottom of the base here. And the reason why is because, sorry, I keep going back and forth. I want to duplicate this object and right make it go up to a certain length like right around there and uh, so that's gonna help create the um, it quickly creates all the geometry that we just made but this time just using um, a group okay and you can also see that it labels it right away so this is the number that I need to look at the translate Y 2.517. I'm going to copy that. That's control C. And then using our handy, here's level two, as you can see, it duplicated, it did the whole group. I'm going to do edit, duplicate special options. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to do translate Y, the number 21. 2.5170. Yours is going to be different, so um, just keep an eye on that. And it's up to me how many levels I want. And if I remember correctly, I think we had six for our leaning tower, so I just need four more. So I'm going to go to four, apply, and there you go. Very
very quickly you can create uh, the layers that the Leaning Tower of Pisa is basically famous for, right? So instead of creating each individual one, you can actually create one main level and then just go ahead and duplicate it, which is very, very handy. If I want to kind of make it look a little bit more like the actual reference, I can duplicate this one, move it up, and then just scale it. And if I had bells, I would totally put some bells on there. Let me go to the top view again. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. Rise it up a little bit. Okay. We're going to duplicate this one, the base. I'm going to bring it, make it bigger. Because again, you want to kind of show off your model in a some sort of space. So let's get close here, close and personal. Okay. So that's kind of like the basics of how to quickly create some levels. This isn't gonna. This model isn't gonna win any awards, but the point is, it's a very basic introduction to how to use groups, how to duplicate, and how to create arc tools and extrude from curves. One last thing I want to show you is how do we make it lean? Well, we're gonna select in our outliner all our four, all our seven levels. We're gonna group it together. Again, it's gonna be Control G. Right. This is gonna be. Whoops. I'm gonna unparent this uh, object, so that's gonna be a Shift P. And by uh, unparent, it just basically means that it's going to remove it from the group. So shift P. Now it's on its own. Select group one. This is going to be tower all. Then I'm going to lean it. Maybe rise it a little bit so it's not so. And there you go. A quick review on how to create the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Really leaning there. I just need a picture of myself leaning against here and then that'd be perfect. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about Maya and its amazing tools that it has. Uh, we learned how to create pillars, how to connect arches together. We learned how to group everything together, duplicate special, and basically just have a fun time creating the Leaning Tower. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I'm always open to seeing everybody's work, so please go ahead and send me links. Make comments about the tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. That's what I'm here for. Uh, these tu uh, tutorials are to help you learn Maya. and. I'm always fascinated by the way people grow. So if my tutorials are helpful at all, please send me a link, make a comment, uh, of course subscribe to my channel, and, uh, and I guess I'll see you next time in Academic Phoenix YouTube. Mm -hmm.